Hey folks, are you running out of time to get everything done? Did you know that there are common Pinterest tasks that you should just you just should skip them? Would you love to be able to to be sure of what really works and what is a waste of time? Well, if so, then today's show is just for you. Hello folks, I am Jeff C of Manly Pinterest Tips and I'm here with Alisa Meredith, Content Marketing Manager at Tailwind, and we have an exciting show for you guys today. We are happy to have everybody here. Thank you so much for joining us live, and um, we would love it if you would kind of share the love and sprinkle the love throughout the interwebs, as it really does help this show, um, and we want you guys to ask your questions. Ask them down below, yeah. and we will pull them up as we go along during the show today and answer them to the best of our abilities, and don't forget, you can also get... Um, 100 pins for free or 30 Instagram posts when you try out Tailwind. You can also get a free month when you upgrade by going to bit.ly forward slash marketing dash unleash, unleashed. That is B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash marketing dash unleashed. And we're also trying something really special this month. Tailwind tips. So if you see something as we're going along during the show today, that's something that makes you go, wow, that's really awesome. That's an awesome tip. I want you guys to put it down below with the, the, the hashtag Tailwind tip. And that way we can find it after the show because we are going to have a drawing for a free selfie light. One of those that clip on your camera. Very, very cool. Um, so we're going to give that away tomorrow. So you get extra credit if you um, actually have your own Tailwind tip that you have found by using Tailwind. You're a longtime user and you found something that really helps. Put that there and put the hashtag Tailwind tip and you'll get extra credit. And uh, make sure to use that hashtag so we can find it later on. So anyway, awesome stuff going on. Um, Elisa, how are yeah. you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little under the weather, but I am still happy to be here. Yes. Yeah. A lot of stuff going on. We do actually, there is some uh, news that has roll, in, yeah. roll out. It, well, you know, you and I kind of debated, has this been out for a while or is it brand new? But it's new to a lot of people because they sent out some press Fair releases. Enough. And yeah. um, um, those are pretty um, pretty impressive. What happened last, this is on Tuesday, they announced two new shopping features, browsable catalogs. Along, uh, alongside pins and personalized shopping ideas in the feed. So let's break those down really quickly, really quickly, quickly, quickly. Of uh, <laughs> browsable catalogs, what are those? What are they talking about here well, alongside pins? I mean, I have seen this underneath, um, like say a big brand like Levi's. There'll be more like shop more Levi's products. So right. I assume that's what what's that that's talking about. Right. And this personalized shopping ideas in the feed. Now, I haven't seen this yet. I, now, I don't do a lot of shopping on Pinterest, but I've seen <laughs> where they've done it, where it, it actually shows, you know, uh, they're like suggesting that you may want to shop here. Uh, has that rolled out to everybody or is that something brand new? I don't. I don't know, honestly, but okay. I don't know. I, I don't think they're going to, I mean, unless they're shopping at Marshall's, they're probably, I'm probably not going to see anything. Like, okay. <laughs> well, I was wondering if it's like, I, you know, cause I'm a like, how come Elisa got a new yeah. feature on Pinterest and I didn't. And I'm like, well, I, I haven't seen it. I, I updated the app and um, they were showing yeah. in all the press releases what it looks like. It's just like little suggested Aww. for you up in the corner. Picked for you. Yeah. yeah. And I don't yeah, have that yet, so I guess I'm. I, they go. They know I'm not going to shop for anything on Pinterest. So anyway, um, maybe yeah, you will one day. Man I know. Cave stuff. Come I on. know. I. You know, there. There's a lot of guy stuff on Pinterest. I know. I was, you know, men's. I mean, there's a huge shopping stuff. There's beard oil because I looked for that, trying to see if that would mm -hmm. re recommend them for me. There's, you know, there's watches. There's all sorts of stuff. So yeah, I'm. I'm tired of all that nonsense. Barbecue. About men. I mean, barbecue, barbecue is yes. huge. It is huge. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let us know if you yeah. have gotten these features. Uh, we would love to know if you guys have them, what you think of this. Is this going to be something that you, is going to cause you to shop more on Pinterest? One of the things that they did roll out with this um, this uh, release is they were saying, I'm trying to find the, um, uh, they were really pushing that on Pinterest, um, people spend more money than all the other social media networks mm -hmm. that they're, they, um, and that like, um, new star found that 75% of sales from its platform occur at least one week after people see ads. So they're saying it's working, but it may take longer and it may be harder for you to see ROI right away 
but it does work uh, using the Pinterest yeah. ads. So I thought that was yeah, interesting. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because the default attribution window on ads is, is 3031. So they're, they're assuming it might take up to 30 days from right. when they see the ad to when they make the purchase, when, when they're doing their reporting. And I think that's, that, that's probably pretty fair, especially. Um, yeah. So, so it just he, t- basically takes about twice as long to convert on Pinterest as it does from other places just because you're so top of funnel generally in Pinterest. Right. That's the other thing they pointed out, that they're very top of funnel yeah. and that people save stuff and then they go back and do it. Um, but they did yeah. really push that apparently around 2.3. It's about 2.3 times more efficient than the others at generating sales. So even though it takes longer awesome. to do it, it works. So keep that in mind right. when you're planning your budget. Anyway, yeah. that is Yeah, and what I love is even thing. like... Yeah, and like even after a Pinterest ad ends and you turn it off, you still see you're getting sales coming in from that, from that right. residual activity, which, I mean, I just love a bargain, so. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's on sale. I'll spend money. It was on, That's what my wife does with Kohl's Cash. Yeah. She's like, I got $5 of Kohl's Cash. I might as well go spend $250. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. I, that's, I saved so much yeah, money save by $5. spending money. It's free money. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, uh, so it's great. So uh, if you guys have seen this out in the wild, let us know in the comments. We'd love to know what you guys think. Um, And if you're having this would be a great time to use one of those tailwind tips. If you're having success with um, uh, doing promoted pins, we would love to know some of your hacks or some things that are really working for you. So let us know. And with the hashtag tailwind tip there down in the bottom. So all right. Today we are talking about yes. kind of something we, we try not to be too negative here on Marketing we Unleashed, do try. but, but yeah. we do want to say what you should stop doing on Pinterest. You know, things that you may have yeah. been doing, may have seen gurus do in the past. Um, well, we're going to tell you what to stop doing here on the show. So, Well, yeah, and I, and I like to think of it like our, our to-do lists are so ridiculously long and they seem like they get longer every day. So let's, let's take a couple items off there. And take okay. some of the pressure off yeah. and do something that works instead. So, and, and you, I'll, I'll give you full credit so I can argue with you later. Uh, you came up with these. So there may <laughs> be some did. arguing that goes on, but I, I want to give you <laughs> okay. full, uh, full credit for this. So number one, you said yeah. crea- uh, we need to stop creating board cover images. Now, why do we yeah. need to do that? Board cover images are pretty. Everybody loves them. You know what, Jeff? If you want to make them, you go right ahead. <laughs> I'm not okay. going to try to I, stop you. Cause <laughs> we won't argue about it. I don't do it, but I just wanted to know oh, why okay. you said to stop. Oh, well, for one thing, and I think this is the biggest reason, um, it, they don't really matter, right? So people are not browsing a Pinterest account to see if they have pretty board cover images and, oh, maybe I'll follow them. Um, the other thing is that those change all the time. So I have seen more, so many times people like, I just spent – three weeks updating my Pinterest board cover images and now they look all crazy. What's the right size? And it's like, you know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't matter. And it also is super frustrating. So it's not going to hurt you other than to frustrate you and waste your time. So why were people doing them in the first place? Um, Because they had this perception that people would go to their profile and like check out their profile and the boards on them. And I think that may have happened a little bit in the beginning but it really is so much about search now and not about you or your curated boards or your covers. Um, it's about your content. Gotcha. So did you ever do board covers? You know, I did because when they first came out, everybody was talking about them. That was back before yeah. like when they went to the, the top. I, I mean, I did a little training on how to do them and why, you mm-hmm. know, because everybody was wanting to do them. And so, you know, right. I was going to show here's the best way to make them. But I quit doing it just because, you know, when they started moving things and it didn't really matter, I just like I, I could create pins instead of creating uh, yes. board covers. So I could take an article that still had a little bit of juice left on it and created a whole new pin instead of worrying about – um, way my board covers looked. So, exactly. uh, so if you are, if you've been doing that and you've like been refreshing them every month, you know, we're not, we're not judging, but no, you do why you don't you to. stop and do some and make new pins for some content mm-hmm. that maybe is evergreen and, you know, maybe that one would go viral or something like that. So it's not so much, it's a bad thing to do. It's more of like, no, it's not a good, aren't. it's not a good return on your investment. Wouldn't you say that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I w- and I would say that this list is not complete and we'll probably come up with more. And, and I, I hope the audience will come up with more in the meantime. But the, the goal is going to be take these things off your list and spend more time on these things that you're probably already doing but could do a little bit more. 
Cool. Cool. So that's the first one. So, um, here's a good question from, um, I'm going to pull this up, um, from Mm -hmm. uh, Sherry. She goes, let me pull it up really quickly here. And she goes, what about when companies look at your Pinterest profile, wouldn't it make it look more cohesive? Yeah. So I think that's what kind of what we were talking about. People don't generally go and check out your Pinterest profile. What they're doing is search. So the the majority of the activity on Pinterest is happening in search for a particular topic of of um, content. So I mean, they people can, but they just don't. Yeah. What do you think, Jeff? Well, I got to pull up this comment from Jenny. She okay. goes, uh, "Board covers often look like a four year old took the pick. Never turns out like you hoped." <laughs> very funny. That's that's very true, <laughs> uh, Jenny. So yeah, it's it was always hard to get them to look right and. Um, uh-huh. Uh, so yeah, so but like, like Elise was saying, the return on investment, that's what we're really looking at. We're really trying to see if yeah. that, you know, is it really worth it when you could take that time and really make a, uh, a better, a better looking pin that you could maybe get some traffic from. So yeah, definitely. All right. So right. that's, that's the first thing to stop doing board covers. We're done. Sayonara. They're out of here. Okay. <laughs> right. What's the second thing that we should stop doing? Okay, it's a habit that a lot of people got into, which is sharing the same pin to the same board over and over and over again, sometimes once a day. So um, kind of like keyword stuffing used to work on Google. Right. That kind of behavior used to work on Pinterest, but it, does, it doesn't anymore. So, so just don't. <laughs> so um, we've heard of people having these intricate spreadsheets of, what they've pinned and when to make sure they get it out every single day to all the boards. And you just don't need to do that. Focus more on your fresh content. And if fresh content for you means, like Jeff said, taking a piece of evergreen content and making a new pin for it, that's great. Or if you're going to spend a little time on a blog post and create a pin for that, excellent. Just don't don't rely on that repetitive pinning of existing content to get you the results that you are hoping for. Very cool. So I also, uh, I wanted to um, um, ask this question that, um, let me pull her up again, because she, she had a great question uh, with um, uh, board names. And since this is kind of the topic that we've been talking about with, you know, board covers, she goes, what about board names? Uh, de- developing clever board names, does that matter? And so what are your thoughts on well, this? Jeff, that was number that was number eight. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read that far. <laughs> no, well, it, it was, but um, I'm glad that she brought it up because uh, clever board names are fun for you. Um, however, the the purpose of a board title and a board description is to give more context to your pin, so you want to be using keywords, right? Gotcha. So, so you're going to pin every pin is going to go to every relevant board that you have. And that relevance is a lot of that's going to have to do with the keywords on it and Pinterest. So we'll look at the pin, the text on the image, the title of the image, the description of the, of the pin and get more context based on the board title and board description as well. So give them something to work with rather than being cute. Gotcha. So here's the, uh, here's a question back to, we talked about, you know, pinning the same pin, every day to the same place over and over again. And this was a good question. So um, Mm -hmm. she, um, let's see, man, there's so many good questions coming through. Um, (laughs) From Danielle, she says this, she goes, "Um, isn't this essentially what smart looping is? So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so smart loop, we have built in limits for how often you can save the same pin to the same board um, because we don't want that kind of repetitive pinning that could be seen as kind of spammy. Um, so if, you, if you're wondering how your smart loop is set up now, you can go in and refresh it so that the, it'll make sure you have enough space between your pins. Um, but that same pin to the same board day after day is not, not cool. Um, and it's not something that we're encouraging. Gotcha. Yeah. So here's the, another question on that same subject. So just we want to make sure that people are clear with what we were talking about with repetitive pinning. Um, Amanda goes, so when you talk about repetitive pinning, do you mean stop creating multiple graphics for no. the same blog? No, that is a really great question. Um, the definition of one pin would be an image and URL combination, right? So you could have 
an image and a URL and you could pin it five times with five different descriptions, but that's still one pin. It's that image and URL together. So once you bring in another image for that same URL, now you have two pins right? And you bring in another image with that same URL, now you have three. So um, definitely create more images for your content because Pinterest wants fresh content and a fresh image equals fresh content. Exactly. So very, very cool. I think we're clear on that. So that was a, a great question uh, from you guys yeah. and, and continue Absolutely. asking them. We'll try to get them as, as many as we can. Your guys are coming fast and furious. Um, so great. Um, Number three, let's go on yes. to what we, and the third thing. So we've talked about we should stop creating board cover images. We need to stop sharing mm -hmm. the same pins to the same board over and over every day. That doesn't mean to we can't create new pins for the blog post, but it's just like right. spamming kind of. Definitely you can never repin again right. to the same board, just not excessively. Yes. So number three, changing other people's pin descriptions why should we stop doing that who why do we do that in the first place I, I i have never done that so why why is this a thing we should stop you know i feel like this was something that was pretty common years ago and then it died off and recently it has come back with a vengeance so there might be a good reason to change a description to a pin and the one that comes to mind is if someone wrote about Tailwind, and that happens a lot, um, and, I, and I feel like the description could be a bit optimized for keywords or something, well, sure, it's to my benefit to change that description when I save it out. However, what, what I'm seeing now is people um, changing pin descriptions to say, pinned by at Jeff C. Check out my website www.manlytimpinterstips.com. So they're not actually changing the link on the pin. They're putting that in the description itself and feeling like, well, hey, I'm doing them a favor by sharing out this pin. Why not give myself a little boost while I'm at it by including my username and my URL? Um, yeah, so that's what I'm seeing. Have you seen that? Uh, I didn't see it until you told me about it <laughs> that I started noticing it. Well, to me, that's almost, yeah. that's kind of spammy hijacking. There was that plugin years uh -huh. ago where you could share some, some websites and it would actually take the URL or put a little thing there at the bottom. I think it was called Snipply or something like that. And everybody was yes, all upset right. about that. Um, yeah. And so that kind of has that same kind of spammy feeling to it. So I anything yeah. that makes that I'm taking credit for something that's not mine or feels like a spammy behavior, I stay away from. So um, yeah. I don't think, it, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it breaks Pinterest terms of service, but it's just not, it's not cool. I mean. It's, yeah, not cool is right. It's very bad etiquette. Um, I had someone doing that with my pins for a while and let me just say that I did not say thank you for it. That's right. <laughs> they're, they're not getting a Christmas card for Lisa. Yeah, so yeah. I was, yeah, and I, I feel like the argument is, well, I'm not changing the URL. The pin still goes to their content. Yes, but if the average pinner, if they're looking at the description, they're going to think you wrote it, right? And that's just not fair um, to be kind of implying that this was your content or that you should take any credit for it. It's just, it's not cool. Um, but I think that there's a third reason why you would never change someone else's pin description, and that's because what good does it do you? <laughs> Like, unless it's written about you and you want that pin to get more distribution. Right. The, there's the no link. Spend, yeah, there's no yeah. link. They can't click on it and go to your site. It's just there, like the URL. They'd have to type it anyway. And it's, yeah, it's just, I don't think it's cool. Well, yeah, and I just, there just isn't much benefit to it. I mean, if you're trying to be nice, okay, be nice, but realize that it's not going to, it's not going to help you. Right. So Unless this it's is, written about you and you want it. Uh, yeah, this is like. a great question. Um, it's, uh, she goes, sometimes my descriptions go to comments uh, on a pin. Is this a glitch? Do you know what she's talking about there? Really? I, I have not seen no. that. So, I would love to see an example of that yeah, if, if you want to share one. If you could, uh, if you could find an example of that sometime in, in, mm. and make a screenshot of it and put it in the, and down below here, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, and share a link too. Yeah, because we'd love to know what's going on because we have not seen that. So... Um, Anyway, that so, um, 
the pr- and I and, and at least it's being nice be- because she can and I'm probably not. Um, but the reason I think this is coming up is because there's been gur- gurus in um, some trainings that have said this to do this. So um, always be careful <laughs> of who's saying what. Um, if you know if they're just saying that to sell a course, maybe and they're they're kind of doing these spammy things. Maybe they're not the best people to uh, get advice from. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just want to call anybody out. By I don't name, want to say them by their name, but that's why it's happening. No. It's because we both know that happening. somebody has a course and they're they're sharing uh, those kind of practices. So always yeah. be careful. Well, always double check. What was really telling is that someone wrote in and said, "What do you think about this? Is this fair? This doesn't quite seem right." And so you know, like you said, Jeff, if it doesn't feel right, then it probably isn't. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> just be on the lookout for those kind of advice, um, you know, and, and, but there are there now there's different strategies, you know, everybody has some different strategies and, and that's okay when you're looking at strategies, but when things kind of seem like that's, I'm taking credit for somebody else's work, then that's kind of to me a red flag yeah. that we should never do that. So, yeah. Anyway, so that is tip number uh, three. So we've had uh, creating, don't create board cover images. Don't share the same pin to the same board over and over every day. And don't change other people's pin descriptions because it's just spammy people. Um, and yeah. Right. Oh, we already did the one about um, cute and clever board names. Well, we're, I want to dive into that a little more because there's some questions okay, about that. Can... But number four was repinning your own pins. Now, what do you mean mm-hmm. by repinning your own pins? I thought we're supposed to repin our own pins if they do good. What do you? And, and what's the whole smart loop thing? I don't get it. What are we supposed to do, Elise? So you're make you're not making sense to me. Oh, am I hurting your head? Yes, I'm you sorry. Are. I know it's very confusing, and I understand why it's confusing. So, um, when when Pinterest gets your new content, right? So they they send it out to your followers first, and they're looking for that engagement on your pin. So they're looking for close ups. They're looking for clicks. They're looking for saves. Now, if you come along and you think, I'm going to up the engagement on my pin by repinning it. So you're actually on Pinterest and you hit the save button. Pinterest is like, uh, hey, I know that's Elise's post and she is repinning it. That's not real engagement. Right? So they're smarter than that. They know, they know what you're doing. Um, so if you want to save your pin to a different board that makes sense to save it on, go to your website and save a fresh version of it. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So you were saying, because, you know, you're not saying um, not to do this. Uh, you're saying when you're inside of Pinterest itself and you're seeing your pin come up yeah. the feed going, hey, there's yeah. my pin, repinning it. That's yeah. what you're saying. So it's okay, like, because right. in Tailwind, when you're doing it inside of Tailwind, uh, you say, like, yeah. there's a different pin and you want to pin it to another board or you're using Smart Loop. You're not saying that is what I get you to no, say. No, I'm not saying that because um, – with Tailwind, nothing is ever like technically a repin. It's it's saving it again, right? So it's a brand new pin. Um, but oh, there's something. So else so that. so let's break. Yeah. I, that's important. What you just said, and it I think a important. lot of people don't know that, is that when you're re like doing the smart loop or you're repinning something inside of Tailwind, it's not a repin. It's a brand new pin. It's not. Okay. Like it's not going like physically going into Pinterest and saying save. Now I have seen from time to time lately where if you find your own pin on Pinterest and you try to save it again to another board, it just it won't even let you. So it's like they're really trying to just discourage that behavior. Um, I think this has become a little more of a thing because there's a plugin out there that a lot of people use, which is really good. But it has this field called um, like repin ID, I think. And the reason for that is it's trying to make Pinterest think that when people pin from your website, it's actually a repin on Pinterest. Mm. So, like, don't, don't try to trick Pinterest. They're going to figure it out. And besides, having someone save from your website to Pinterest is at least as good as having someone repin from inside Pinterest. So, right. again, just don't try to play around with Pinterest. They, they figure it out. Right. Well, here's a great question um, from... Uh... Let's see. Gosh, darn it. It goes so fast. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so it, this is from Carrie Ann. She goes, um, what if you're pinning from a secret pin board? So are you talking about like repinning yes. from well, a secret pin board? Yeah, so, so it would be repinning. Public. Yeah, Yeah. I, I don't know why you, wouldn't, why you wouldn't just go to the website and pin it. Okay. Like, I, I mean, 
is it is it a bad thing to do probably not but i think i would rather go to like either go to tailwind and hit you know pin again right. or go to the website and do it and brenda asked this question when i schedule pins on tailwind and choose several boards is that okay yeah, so you're probably talking about board lists or just choosing several boards at the same time. Absolutely, you can do that as long as the pin that you're saving is relevant to those boards. And it's a good idea to put an interval in. So there's interval pinning available. You just hit the little button and you can say, I want to have, five, let's say, five days in between each of these pins. Just to spread it out a little bit. Very cool. Um, and, and, and I just want to say that we don't, like... We are a Pinterest partner, but they they don't tell anybody the magic number is say you know wait seven days between pinning or wait four months between pinning to the same board. They just aren't going to do that because they they don't want anybody figuring out how to game the algorithm. Right. And it, you know it's just not something we need to know. So when we give recommendations or suggestions or we we change Smart Loop. That's based on, on our conversations with them, but it's not ever going to be a magic number. So uh, on this question, too, uh, and this was back with when we were talking about putting, I believe, putting in people taking and putting in stuff in the description. She goes, in respect, mm -hmm. uh, do you what do you recommend to do with stolen pins preventing this? Should, should I be adding my details to the image? So I'm assuming she means a watermark. Yeah. Yeah, so Pinterest actually recommends that we do add some subtle branding to our pins, whether that is your URL or a logo, either at the top or bottom in the center of your pin. Because on the corners, it tends to get covered up by Pinterest elements. Um, so absolutely add a watermark. That sadly does not stop people from, from stealing your pins and redirecting them elsewhere. Um, but it does make it easier if someone were to click through and say, hey, this isn't the right website then they can report that instance of the pin. So at least you get a little bit of a, a chance that they're going to get caught. Very cool. And so here's the, the question, another question. So uh, Lisa, are you recommending to not use the repin ID mm -hmm. plugin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the plugin um, itself is great, but it's just that one feature of it. I would just not use. Just leave blank. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. And here is a great question um, from Samantha. She goes, what is Smart Loop? Uh, isn't that saving the same pin again to the same board? So uh, yeah. I, let's talk about what Smart Loop is, what that feature is inside of Tailwind. Okay, so yes, it is a feature where you can have your best pins go to a selected number of boards and in a certain time frame. So, but the idea is not, it's going out to the same board every day, right? That's that was that was the old way and, and a program that doesn't exist anymore. There are reasons to be resharing your pins, right? So if it's a pin that does really well every holiday season, well you want to make sure that you remember to get it out at the holiday season. You don't want to have to remember that year after year. So you put right. it in, and you tell Pinterest, here's the window, and if or you tell Tailwind, here's the window when I want it to go out, and here's how many times then you don't have to worry about it every year. The the thing, my favorite part about Smart Loop is the analytics on it. So it's it's good to look at them every month or so and see what's what's my repin average for this loop. And then just kind of go through and see is is something like not working anymore and just just take take it out. Um, because you don't want you don't want to be repinning things that are not engaging. That's a great point. So hopefully that's a great uh, ex explanation of what Smart Loop is for uh, for uh, everybody out there. This is a great question from Laura. I want to make sure we get this one up because Laura, thank you. It's Laura uh, Patterson. She's here almost every week. We want to give her a shout out because she asked, asked some welcome. questions. And she asked, um, Lisa, so if I'm on Pinterest yeah. and I use the Chrome extension to schedule one of my pins to different boards on Tailwind, is that still considered mm -hmm. fresh? I'm a little confused by this. Someone suggested first mm -hmm. pinning straight to Pinterest so I can add a title for SEO, but then scheduling through Tailwind since it's easier to schedule out multiple boards with intervals, of course. So well, deep question there. Great long question, right? And I think that there are a couple of different issues here. So the first one I want to address is the title for SEO. So we started getting questions about this at Tailwind when when Pinterest changed the up the pin upload um, 
layout. So now you can enter the image. You can do a title, description, and URL. The title is a new thing. So is the title important? Yes, it is. I've, I've gone back and forth with support about this uh, a couple of times. Like, how important is it? Is it more important than the description? <laughs> they're, they're like, what is wrong with you? Why do you care so much about this? I mean, they didn't, but that was like kind of what I was reading into the reply. They're like, just put the keywords somewhere. <laughs> so <Right. coughs> is, is that title important? Yes, I would say so. Um, generally, where it's going to come from is if you have your rich pins enabled, which you should, it's going to pull that automatically, right? So if you if you do nothing and you upload them to Pinterest, um, or if you sh share them through Tailwind, it's going to go to your website and pull out that rich data for you, and enter that as your title. If you do nothing and you don't have rich pins, it's going to pull the, it's going to choose the first part of your description, and put that into the title. So make sure that you're putting your keywords into the first part of your description as well. So you can do how, however you want. I've had people say, well, what if I want to override what, what's on my website by entering in a new title right in Pinterest? You can absolutely do that, but, but realize that Pinterest wants to see continuity from, from what you're pinning to what is on your website. So the closer it can match, the better, right? And that's going to help your distribution. Very cool. Thanks for that great question, Laura. Um, so yeah, that did was I answer the whole thing? Well, um, let's, <laughs> uh, let, me, let me pull up again. So oh, oh, yeah. um, let's see, where was it? Um, uh, so here it is. Let me send it again. Okay. Um, she right. goes, so um, Pinterest Chrome extension schedule one of my pins at different boards and Tailwind. Is that yeah. still considered fresh? Yeah. Okay. Is that still considered fresh is the part I think I did not yeah. answer. Um. Yeah, I mean, nowadays, I think when we talk about pin freshness, it's really a new image to a URL or a whole new URL with an image, right? That's the freshest of the fresh. If you're just talking about avoiding repinning your own content with the idea of gaming the system by making it look like more engagement is happening than really is, yeah, you're absolutely fine to go use the Chrome extension to schedule a pin. That would be considered not like repinning. Very cool. Very cool. So that is yeah. number, um, what was that number four? So, um, four. we have, yeah. we have something really special because uh, one, you guys have been going and I've been seeing the tailwind tips come up. We've got some tailwind, the hashtag tailwind tips from, um, let's see. Um, let's see. I think Carol had one and some other people had one. So keep them coming. That's great. You guys, every time you give us a tailwind tip with the hashtag tailwind tip, you get entered to win the free, uh, phone, uh, uh, cell phone selfie light, which are really cool, which I, I, yeah. I, I probably need to try to enter and win. But um, anyways, speaking of tailwind tips, we have our very own special person to give their very own tailwind mm -hmm. tip straight from tailwind headquarters. She's been waiting patiently in the wings. Hopefully she'll remember to unmute, unmute her microphone. So uh, there <laughs> she is. Um, Sarah Grove is here Hello. with us to give us the tailwind tip. So, Sarah, what is the Tailwind tip for today? All right. So my name is Sarah, and I'm a member of the customer success team here at Tailwind. And the Tailwind tip is, why are you seeing different analytic numbers between Pinterest and Tailwind? So Pinterest shows the aggregate or combined number of engagements for each pin. That is, every instance where a pin's image or URL is matching. And if you share a pin to one of your boards, and let's say nine people repin it. You'll see stats for all 10 instances. That pin on Pinterest, when you look at look when you look at your analytics. And by instances, I mean the total number of repins, impressions, and clicks for all 10 of those pins for the last 30 days. And now Tailwind offers a slightly different view of analytics. We give you the all-time engagement for the pins that you've saved. The numbers are not aggregated or combined with other instances of the same pin. So that's the image or URL combination that Elisa mentioned earlier. So when you see just that one pin you've pinned is performing once or since you've saved it on Tailwind or when you publish it over to Pinterest. And that is the Tailwind tip of the week. 
Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. That's really great. Yeah. And <laughs> I do want to pull up um, this uh, this um, um, comment from Jenny because it's just perfect. She goes, I really think there should be a college degree for Pinterest. <laughs> Hashtag Pinterest major. There really should. I mean, all this stuff that, all the value bombs you dropped right there, uh, Sarah, was awesome. Um, thank you so much for your tips. And there really should be. You are our first graduate, I would say, for the, the College of Pinterest right there, Sarah. And Sarah has something to show us. I do, I do. Um, before we go, I wanted to show off this really awesome Tailwind selfie light. Um, That's right. Right backwards or maybe forwards if you're more of a front person and turn it on it has three different levels of brightness oh, and you're good to go for your selfies. very very oh. cool and um I, I do want to say this also uh laura has said this she goes uh jeff banner moment they're over 200 live do i feel a t-shirt giveaway coming on so let's say yeah. hey here if you if we hit 225 the first person to take a screenshot and drop it down below will get that uh, Tailwind T-shirt. So mm -hmm. keep uh, spreading the love everywhere. And uh, we've got, I think, what, two more points left? If we hit that, you could win a, uh, a Tailwind shirt if we hit 225. Take a screenshot, put it down below, and keep the Tailwind tips coming, too, because you could win that selfie light that we just had on. So mm -hmm. very exciting stuff. Um, and those Tailwind T-shirts are pretty <laughs> awesome. So thanks, thanks Sarah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. See ya. All right. So, uh, man, stuff's happening here. So, um, <laughs> so I want to, I want to couple up this comment before we get into the, the last part of it. Um, this is from Rocky. He goes, um, I'm, I'm any training for tailwind. I'm new with Pinterest and tailwind quite lost and overwhelmed. Uh, the oh, no. best place I would start is look at the tailwind blog. There's tons of stuff on there. And if you do, let's say you're, you're kind of on the fence about trying tailwind Sign up for their free account. Go to uh, this URL, bit.ly forward slash marketing dash unleashed, and try their, their trial. And what you can do is there's a ton of videos that you can watch. They're inside of the, um, the when you first sign up, but you can also go to YouTube to Tailwind's channel if you want to look at, just watch them. If you want to bulk watch and do some Netflix and with Tailwind videos, you can do it right there on uh, YouTube. So uh, that's probably the best place to find the training on Tailwind and Pinterest. Tons of information there. So Yeah, and remember, if you have questions, please submit them because we're going to have this Tailwind Tip of the Week every week if you guys like it. So submit a question, and we'll try to get an answer for you. Yes, and, and Laura picked up on that, and she's entered again because she said, hey, there's a Tailwind Tip right there. So thanks, Laura, <laughs> for, for getting that. Everybody wants that selfie light. It's really cool. It's really, really yeah. cool. So It actually works, too. I, I saw Colby at Tailwind tried it out. It was It's pretty amazing for this little tiny thing. Yeah, yeah. It does make a difference. I mean, it, they really mm -hmm. do. So um, up your Instagram game with the Tailwind Selfie Life by Tailwind Tips. That's right. So That's right. Um, number five. Now this, mm. this, Elisa, well, this is a controversial one. Yeah. Well, oh. we've talked about this for a while. So okay. um, it was cool. number five is what not to do <sighs> is stop deleting pins. <laughs> yes. This was another Please. thing where there's some gurus that said stuff and there's all this controversy and tests were made, hair was pulled, yeah. people were mad. Um, so mm, why roll. should we stop deleting pins? Well, I, I need to know first though, where do you where do you fall on this issue? I have never wanted to delete pins. One, because I'm lazy. Okay. I'm very lazy. <laughs> and two, it didn't make sense to me because even um, those were out. Now, I could see deleting pins that weren't mine that didn't make sense anymore on a board or yeah, something okay. like that. But I would never delete my boards because there's that whole thing. It makes them fresh or, you know, it, it makes your account active when you're doing that. Pinterest likes to see that you're playing with stuff. I've heard that excuse. Yeah. Um, but my thing, it's always, even if it's, you know, if they've been out there, it's still a link back to my website. Why would it's I a take a link? Website? Why would I take that away? I know. And you never know when the right person with the right audience is going to pick that up and save it and then their audience is going to see it and it just takes off so i've had pins that will take off months after you pin them and continue to perform months and years after you pin them but if i had looked at it a week after i pinned it and saw oh this has no repins i should probably take it off because then pinterest will think i have a more engaging account i would have missed all that traffic and the truth is that Pinterest is looking for that upfront engagement, right? They send it out to your followers. They want to see that engagement from your followers, which happens quickly. 
So a week later, it's too late, right? So <laughs> there's no point in doing it. It's a complete waste of time. And like you said, what's the harm in having all those links out there? And as I found and many others have found, sometimes a pin is kind of a late bloomer. But if you cut it off too soon, you would never have gotten the benefit from it. That's a great point. Where do you think uh, this whole deleting pins thing came from? Was it a certain article? Um, was there an article written somewhere, wasn't there, that what started the whole controversy? Yeah, I think somebody did an experiment about it and felt that it increased their engagement or something. But, And I think that's the reason for it is that if you only keep your highly engaging pins, Pinterest will think you have a highly engaging account and therefore increase the distribution of your pins. But like I said, because of talking to Pinterest, and I think it was actually in that Facebook Live I did with Sarah last year, if, if you like, if you wait a week to say, oh, it's not super engaging, you take it off, it's too late. But they've mm. already noticed that your followers did not engage with it. And so to, to remove it isn't going to help you at that point. Very okay. good. Okay, yeah. so we, we're not deleting pins anymore, people. We're we done. Not. Do not do we it. We have other things to do. And it, yeah, that's a, I think all these tips that we've been giving is that there's time better spent elsewhere. They're not so much yeah. that it's going to like hurt your account or anything like that, but it's more like, why are you messing around with this stuff when you could be doing creating content that could give you traffic? So I think what it all right. boils down to. Um, I yeah. do want to um, pull up, uh, gosh, where was it? That was a great question. Oh, um, this is one I want to know your, it's actually a tailwind tip. Uh, she goes, I have found so, this is, a Angie says, I have found so many pins which I would love to schedule via Tailwind, but there is no URL. Please remember to include your pin destination by adding you, your URL link. I've yeah, seen that please. as well. So, so you're talking about like on Pinterest, do you see something? Yes, or even when I go, when I bring in something from um, into Tailwind that I want to schedule, that sometimes there's no URL to it. And, you know, they will, you can't even schedule it because Tailwind will say there's no URL for this. And I'm like, ah! You know, make sure it's going somewhere because it was yeah. it's a pretty picture and it had great content. It just anyway. Right. So well, great point, and Angie. That's, that's frustrating for users as well because I see, oh, my word, that's the couch I've been looking for for three years. And I click on the link and it was uploaded by Jeff C. And it's like, oh, I'll never find that couch now. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, and here's a side note. So I want you to, yeah. this is another great question because I want to make sure, because we have users, we have power users, we have people who are just getting started with Tailwind and we have people who are just really, you know, maybe they've been, they're playing around with the trial right now. But uh, this is a great question from um, Samantha. She goes, help with tribes. Why should I join? Yeah. So I can tell you why I love tribes um, because I do like to share other people's content, even though, I mean, I think for Tailwind, we have we have an advantage in that people write nice stuff about us. So it helps me find content people have written about us to share, which is wonderful for us. But I also do like to support other people in the community. So my friends like, like Jeff and Kate and others who write good content, I, I'm very happy to share that out to my audience because I think they'll be interested in it. It's just kind of a nice thing to do. So a tribe allows me to kind of curate that list of content, knowing that I'm going to get the new stuff that's coming out, the good stuff. Um, and also, I am not able to create enough content on my own to, to just pin my own content all the time. So I need to supplement with other people's um, content. And so before tribes, I would go to like all top. I had a Feedly curation, but then I'd have to scour through all of those and make sure there was some kind of pinnable image. Um, and then I have to write the description. Well, in Tribes, the description's already written. It, it's going to be a pinnable image. It's going to have a URL. And in general, I know most of the people in my Tribe, so I know it's good content. So even if you're going like onto Pinterest to find something to, to repin, which you can do. You, gotta, you have to check the link. You have to make sure the content is still good. You have to make sure the link is still good. Um, whereas in tribes, once you get to know the people in your tribe, you know, you can just share. It's a huge time saver, I think. What about yeah, you? Yeah, that's, I mean, you nailed the same reasons why I do the same thing and, and why I love tribes. And like you and I are into tribes together. So I know your content's mm -hmm. always great and good. And, and a lot of other people in that same tribe I trust. And I know everything uh, for the most part, Alisa. 
write stuff that I agree with. But um, <laughs> yeah. but it's, so it's it's that's why tribes are very very powerful. Um, it's like I always say it's like group boards on steroids. It's they're just you it know, is. it's and just it's, yeah. And and group boards are being devalued now on Pinterest. And so having yeah. tribes is just is it's so good so cool for supplementing your content. Yeah, um, and I like that um, the the tribe admins and owners can can see the people's activity in the tribe. So we can easily spot people who are coming in just to dump content and leave right. without kind of sharing back. Uh, so we can kind of nip that in the bud as we yeah. did. But the other thing I like is that I, I have found a lot of bloggers that I never knew before because they asked for an invite to my tribe. And it's like, where where have you been hiding all this time? And I'm just <laughs> glad to find all this great content. But I don't think I ever would have found them without tribes. I agree. Yeah. So yeah, I found a, a bunch of cool people that I started following in other places yeah. because of I was impressed with their images, and then I read their content, and then right. it just uh, I was like, okay, these people are cool. I do want to point out this uh, this uh, uh, point from we talked about uh, deleting right. pins, and Terry goes, I had a pin go viral two years after I pinned it. Don't delete wow. pins. So <laughs> All right. there, right. there's there's a case study right there for why mm -hmm. you should not be deleting pins on Pinterest because you just never know. You just never know. So very, very cool. Um, so we have been talking all about what not to do on Pinterest. And so the first one, of course, was not to do board cover images anymore. Uh, you don't want to share uh, pins to the same board over and over every day. You don't want to change other people's pin description because that's spammy. You don't want to repin your own pins inside of Pinterest. And we just finished don't delete pins. And here's another one that is also controversial, but you say don't add hashtags to old pins. Why not? I don't know. But I don't Pinterest know. loves hashtags now. Aren't we supposed to do hashtags, Elisa? Come on. You're just trying to pick a fight, but I honestly don't know why this is controversial. <laughs> because, <coughs> excuse me, the hashtag feed is chronological. It's like, it's like the only thing left on Pinterest that is truly chronological. So you're going to see the first one's going to be, say, 30 seconds ago, and then a minute ago, and then four. And then, okay, so if you saved a pin six months ago, and you go and add a hashtag, it's not in the feed. They're not going to say, oh, it was pinned six months ago, but you added a hashtag two minutes ago, therefore it goes in the second spot. No, no, it's gone. It's done. Just add them to your pins going forward. It helps new pins. does not help old pins. No, it doesn't help. Okay. Okay. Straight. She, Elisa, <laughs> just don't argue with her on this. So it's once again, it goes back to is is it worth the time spent going and doing it? No, not really. So it's just better not to go back and add hashtags. It doesn't um, help. It, it doesn't, doesn't hurt. Doesn't really help. Yeah. It, I yeah. mean, you can argue with me. You're allowed to. No, I I don't want to do anything that'll make me do more work. Come on. This is I can get out of putting hashtags on old pins. So <laughs> now I have gone back if I if I just posted one like that day I'm like oh crap I forgot to do that I'll go do yeah. that but I'm yeah, not I'm not going work. back to old stuff that that still has some virality to it that I go back and go oh man what if this will help if I do a hashtag it's not worth it to do that just save it again with a hashtag in the description right much better off doing that very cool so that's one other thing not to do um, tip number four is to um, no, not four. Uh, we're on <laughs> we're on six. So number seven, changing your own pin description. So what do you mean by we should not be changing our own pin descriptions? Okay, um, I think I wrote that um, on Nyquil or something. But um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, so there was a time, and I think this is what I meant that you could pin the same image to the same URL and just change the description up and Pinterest would be like, oh, look, a fresh pin. And you could appear in different searches for different keywords and it would be like everything old is new again because you changed the description. Well, that's not the case anymore, right? So the, uh, the definition of a pin is an image and URL combination. So it doesn't matter what the description is. Gotcha. Gotcha. I mean, so, it matters, but as, as far as making the pin brand new again, it doesn't. It's not, it's not worth that. doing it. Gotcha. Okay. Important tip from Elisa that she wrote while she was on Nycro. So we need to make sure. Those are the best ones, probably. Those are probably the tips that will go viral is the NyQuil-inspired uh, pins. So um, the last tip that we have is 
using cutes, we should not be, this is not a tip, this is what not to do. Uh, you, we should stop using cutesy names and spaces in your board titles. Now, I know what you mean by spaces. I mean by uh, cutesy names, but what do you mean by spaces? Oh. oh, you don't know what I mean by that? No. You so, have you, you've never seen the board titles where, like, if the board title was going to be um, BBQ recipes, it would be like B space B space Q space space R space E. Our, no. our space, just because it kind of looks cool, it looks very different on your profile to have those spaces in between the letters of each board title uh, letter. But um, Pinterest can't read that, right? They're looking for actual words, so you're wasting your keywords if you do that. I have seen that more than once, and it kind of it's really sad because it's a missed opportunity um, that they're doing for looks. All righty. Well, uh, here's a great question from um, uh, Marissa. She says, so should, uh, no, so, um, I'm sorry. So does it mean that A-B testing descriptions are no longer relevant? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, you can try it, but generally speaking, the first time your pin goes out the, with the, like a brand new image and a brand new URL, that's the one that's going to get the most distribution. So it would be really difficult to do a good A-B test because of that. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. So um, those are what not to do on Pinterest. So I will go through them one more time. Do not create board cover images. Do not share the same pin to the same board over every every over and over every day. Do not change other people's pin descriptions. Come on, folks. Don't be spammy. And don't repin your own pins. And don't delete your pins. Don't add hashtags to old pins. Don't change your own pin descriptions. And please, please don't use cutesy names and spaces for your board titles. And you know, like um, stuff I like. That's not a good thing to do. So that's I eight. Well, I, I mean, to be fair, I feel like when Pinterest first started and they gave us like default names of boards to start with, I think some right. of them were kind of like that. Right. <laughs> but, but if you're using it for marketing, I mean, that's fine for personal, but if you're using it for marketing, use your keywords. Right. Yeah. So all these things you don't have to do anymore. Instead, make a new image every day. I mean, if if there's one thing you could do to drastically increase your Pinterest results of, for your marketing, be a brand new image every single day. It doesn't have to be a brand new blog post or a brand new product listing. Just give them a new image. Um, they will love you. Very cool. So those are our what not to do. And uh, before we wrap up, yeah, Elisa, are you feeling up to maybe diving into somebody who has graciously thrown up their Pinterest account for us to look at and review? Do you feel up to doing that? Yeah, We've got let's about do 10 that. minutes. Okay. Let's do that and then we'll open up to for others who want to. Yes. So what we're doing well. is we've asked people to submit their Pinterest account and their Pinterest profile to get at least as expert eye on oh, this this you? this profile. <laughs> I'll I'll just make snide comments. But um, I want so mm -hmm. if you guys would love to have this happen and would you like to be featured on our show, uh, make sure you uh, put your link in the comments and we will uh, get to and see if we can have time to do that on one of our Pinterest shows. So I am going to go ahead and pull that up. And so this is Shelly. Uh, clay spot and um, she has this Pinterest account and I think everybody can see this now on screen so uh, Elisa tell me your first impression about her Pinterest account what are you seeing that you like and what you yeah. don't like well you know I, I have to be honest I was really um, kind of conflicted about the profile image I, I like it I, I'm not sure if I would have chosen it because it's very much about her product. And so it, to have a face is a little bit different, but I kind of like it. What do you think? Yeah, I think um, I, I could go either way um, because you know, a, a, a lot of, and I, and I know she sells a lot of stuff on Etsy, it looks like, uh, a oh. lot of her pottery. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of times the, the places that do be best on Etsy have like a person behind it because, you know, you're seeing their handmade art and they can see... Um, you know, that, uh, you know, that kind of aspect of them. So I can see that, especially for her selling it on Etsy. Um, but okay. you know, most of the time for like business accounts, you kind of want to either have the logo or something that's more, mm -hmm. I don't know, but this, I think, and then again, you always want, you do, you do business with people, not brands. So I think this is fine. Yeah. I do too. And I'm glad you brought that up about Etsy because a lot of her pins for her own content are going to lead to Etsy. So 
for them to have a face with it before they go to her store, I think is probably a good idea. Yeah, I think that's probably um, right too. Okay. So uh, something I noticed was um, some some boards that looked like they might be a little bit more personal. Right. So um, like jewelry, being you, um, maybe ideas for home festival fashion, handmade by Etsy. Well, handmade by Etsy bling might be okay. But it just seemed like mama needs a new something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it well, like and, maybe and some of the... Yeah, some of the things that you said about um, cutesy board title, titles, I think that has a, 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 you know some some relevance here. But I also think a lot of these things, and if you're if you do want to have some of these things, like being you, maybe it fits her brand. I haven't dope, uh, going in deep enough to see it, but it was mostly inspirational quotes. But if mm-hmm. if that's something that you're using personally and and doesn't really affect your brand, then make that a secret board that you could still pin that's stuff to, and you can still have. And you could always make it active later, but that's how you can have the same going on the same account. Um, yes. But that's what I was kind of um, thinking too. I and I wanted to see more of her content. I think you really had to dig deep to find out what she does and mm-hmm. what she's selling. And um, I mean, she. I, I I do think that at the top here, she had a a a really good. Um, uh, name, she tells what she does. She's a, cer- a ceramic maker of nature inspired images carved with clay. And then her description looked pretty good to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really felt like reading that I got a good idea of who she was, but I didn't really see some of that reflected inside of her boards. Yeah. And, and I guess I would say, um, for her, for her description and her, her name and everything, I would rather see it, um, use keywords that, that the pinner would be using. So oh. she has her, her brand name first, which, you know, people are, are really not going to be searching for her brand name. Um, so I would, if she wants to put that in, I would put that at the end and then a ceramic maker of nature inspired images carved on clay. I mean, if that's something that she feels like people are searching, are people searching nature inspired images or carved on clay? I, I don't think so. I mean, maybe nature inspired images, maybe ceramics, um, but I just feel like there needs to be a little bit more consideration to keywords there and in her description. And, and, and I would even argue, even if she is carving on clay, let's make she's making pottery, she's actually carving on that. Most people mm-hmm. will still be searching pottery. So yeah. figuring out a way to move that into this, like you were saying, into the description, yeah. even though she may be actually carving on clay, that's yeah. in, in what she's doing. But yeah. most people probably aren't searching for carving on clay. Because right. I do a lot of searching for, like, for carving, and I've never seen clay um, carving. Because I do a lot of wood carving, and so I never see clay carving in Pinterest anywhere. So that's why so I would there, see that. Yeah, I would go like, more with unique, like unique pottery gifts, unique pottery mm, ideas, yes. something like that. The, the way people search on Pinterest is just a little bit different. Um, but that mostly what I know is, and I, I wanted to add to you know having those boards that aren't really relevant to her to what she's selling. Um, I, I like to confess this as often as possible. In fact, this will be my second time today <laughs> that with my own account, I, I, you know, I started out personal, went to business, went to business and personal. And by that time I had the most confused bunch of followers in the world, right? They're like, who is this person? Is she pinning about recipes and workouts and hair or is she pinning about marketing? So, I mean, I had all these followers who were really digging my recipes and stuff that I was pinning. But when my blog post would come out that I'd spent so much time on, there was crickets. So I really, I tanked my engagement by inadvertently um, drawing in the wrong kind of followers. And I, I don't, I don't think she's done as badly as I did. I think it would be really hard to do as badly as I did. Um, But I think she could do better by tightening up that relevance. I think that's a great point. So is there anything else we want to point out uh, on this account? I mean, we we are going to be gentle. If you guys, I see a lot of you guys submitting uh, your your boards uh, in the comments. And so we... We will be gentle, and so we want to we want to be yeah. constructive criticism. I, I, she is active yeah. on Pinterest. She's got us some great boards. She's got some great products on Etsy. So if you are into this, make sure you go and and oh, follow yeah. her. And she's got some really cool stuff that she's she's producing. So um, yeah. anything else? Log- are you logged in so that you can see her activity tab? Uh, I am not. I oh. couldn't log. In. When I tried logging in, it, ah. Pinterest freaked out on me. So and okay, you have a cat. Well, 
Yeah. I do have a cat. He's almost on my keyboard. Um, well, I looked at it, logs in, and I noticed I went to her activity tab so I could see what it is people were pinning um, because I had kind of a thought that that maybe her images were a little bit dark. So if, um, let's see, I'm trying to see where her images would be. Um, and I was thinking, well, maybe she needs one of those Lightroom presets that brightens everything Oh, yeah, up. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be worth trying. However, one of the pins that I saw people were saving over and over again were, was kind of a dark one. Um, she does a great job with her images. Though. They're, they're very, like, lifestyle. Even if it's just, like, a, a table with a nice background, um, they just look really nice. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if those are all hers or not. But she had some really nice ones, too, like where somebody is holding a piece of, of pottery. And it's just she has really beautiful images. That was my only thought that maybe they could be brightened up a little bit. But people don't seem to mind. Like the, one of the darker ones is the ones that got one that got pinned over and over again. Yeah, one of the things that she could also do is if she wanted to have, like, make an image inside of a brighter color to experiment if that would work. Instead of just having a huge, instead of doing a, because a lot of times people who are buying things, they don't want to have a, a color applied to the image because then they're like, they'll get it like, that's not the color that was in your product photo. Um, and true. so um, taking that product photo and putting it like shrinking it down a little bit and putting like maybe two different shots inside of a, like a, a bright tailwind blue background, which would be bright and maybe yeah. would catch the eye more than just a darker image. I would experiment with that. And we've talked about all day mm -hmm. is, um, creating multiple pins for products. And so I would do that to test mm -hmm. all the different ways that maybe you could figure out to try to brighten it up, not change the color of it, but actually brighten it. So it, uh, because brighter colors tend to do better on Pinterest and catch the eye. Yep. Yeah. But overall I thought it was a good account. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Awesome. Yeah. Well, so we actually have a, a form to to submit your um, your account to be featured. Do you have oh, that link there? I don't have the link uh, with me you right now. I didn't. Did you okay. put it in the, the document? Because I didn't see it. Um, oh, man, but we've got a ton didn't. of people right. who, who dropped them in the comments. We'll okay, make sure great. we put them over there. Um, okay. We'd have Cal or somebody do that. But thank you, thank you so much. I We have a couple minutes. Well, we don't have a couple minutes. Oh, well, we'll save the questions for um, next time because you guys have been awesome. This has been a great show. Um, just so you guys are such an engaged group. We uh, uh, Kayla did. Honestly, she did. You. I mean, Kristen did put the, the form out in, down in there. So um, thank oh, you, thanks, Kristen. Kristen, for doing that. You guys, we would also love for you guys to go to bit.ly forward slash marketing dash unleashed uh, and check out the, the special we have there for you guys. And with that, Alisa, I'll let you have the last word. What? You never let yes. me have the last word. I know. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank you very much for carrying this show today because uh, my brain is fried with whatever uh, germs I have. So I appreciate it. I'll take half your brain and, uh, any day. <laughs> and thank you guys for I. When, when we come on and you have questions, that just gives us so much more energy. It makes us feel like we're, we're doing good things with our time. And so thank you. You guys are the best. And with that, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you yeah. next week. Bye now. Bye.